This is the Tudor's Dynasty Podcast. And now, Rebecca Larson. A Brief History is a supplemental episode of the Tudor's Dynasty Podcast. On this episode, we welcome Tudor historical fiction author Tony Riches. Tony's latest book is Catherine Tudor Duchess. It's about the life of Catherine Willoughby. And on this episode, Tony Riches is going to give us a brief history on Catherine Willoughby. Without further ado, here's Tony Riches. Attractive, wealthy, and influential, Catherine Willoughby is one of the most unusual ladies of the Tudor court, a favourite of King Henry VIII. Catherine knew all his six wives, his daughters Mary and Elizabeth, and his son Edward. So how did this daughter of a proud Catholic become a champion of religious reform and risk her life for the Protestant cause when Queen Mary Tudor came to the throne? Catherine was born at Parham in Suffolk on the 22nd of March 1519 and was the daughter of William Willoughby, the 11th Baron Willoughby de Eresby, and his Spanish wife, Maria de Salinas. Maria was lady-in-waiting and a close companion to Queen Catherine of Aragon, and King Henry VIII paid for the wedding of Catherine's parents at Greenwich Palace and gave them Grimsthorpe Castle in Lincolnshire as a wedding present. Catherine was named after the Queen, and as the only surviving child of the marriage, one of the wealthiest heiresses in England. Catherine also became the 12th Baroness Willoughby de Eresby when her father died. She was seven years old and lived in seclusion with her mother at Parham until her wardship was purchased by Sir Charles Brandon, Duke of Suffolk, brother-in-law and lifelong friend of the King. Charles Brandon planned for Catherine to marry his son and heir, Henry, Earl of Lincoln, but when Brandon's wife, Mary Tudor, the Dowager Queen of France, died in September 1533, the Duke decided to marry young Catherine himself. Although he was 50 and Catherine was by then 14, their age difference was not unusual for the time, although eyebrows were raised because Brandon waited barely three months after the death of his wife. Catherine's marriage to the Duke proved a successful partnership. The Duke became the richest landowner in Lincolnshire and Catherine became a Duchess with privileged access to the King and the Tudor court. Brandon's son Henry died of a fever in March 1534, not as some suggested at the time of a broken heart, but Catherine and Charles had two sons, Henry, the new heir, was born in 1535 and Charles in 1537. Brandon rebuilt Grimsthorpe Castle using money from the dissolution of the monasteries and the couple hosted the King's progress to the north with his new queen, Catherine Howard. It is recorded that on this occasion, at least, his young queen behaved herself. Catherine Willoughby became popular at court and was well known for her wit and often outspoken views about the pomp and ceremony of the Catholics. When her nemesis, the Catholic bishop Stephen Gardner, tried to silence her, Catherine notoriously named her dog after him and would call it to heel to amuse the court. Catherine and Charles were chosen to welcome Anna of Cleves to England and Catherine became a friend and confidant, a connection which later proved invaluable. Catherine's religious views were reinforced when Anne Askew, a reformist Lincolnshire woman who she knew, was condemned as a heretic and burnt at the stake in March 1545. Catherine must have feared that Anne would name her, but even under extreme torture in the Tower of London, She refused to implicate others. Catherine became a close friend of Henry VIII's sixth and last queen, Catherine Parr, and visited her often. The queen shared Catherine's Protestant views and Catherine invited the leading reformer, 
Hugh Latimer to Grimsthorpe Castle to preach about the need for a simpler religion which could be understood and made relevant to ordinary people. Charles Brandon died suddenly in August 1545 when Catherine was 26. His heir, Henry, was 10 years old and joined the household of young Prince Edward to continue his studies. King Henry VIII was very fond of Catherine and there were rumours she might become his seventh wife. But Henry died on the 28th of January 1547, so we'll never know. Catherine's sons were both knighted at Edward's coronation and went to St John's College, Cambridge to complete their education. With her friend William Cecil, Catherine helped to fund the publication of the Queen's controversial book, The Lamentation of a Sinner, in 1547, and became a vocal and influential champion of religious reform. In the summer of 1551, during an outbreak of what was known as the Sweating Sickness, Catherine sent her sons Henry and Charles to the Bishop of Lincoln's Palace at Buckton in Huntingdonshire to escape the deadly disease. Sadly, on July the 14th, 1551, both her sons succumbed to the sickness and died within minutes of each other. Catherine spent a year in mourning, then married for love to her gentleman usher Richard Bertie in 1552. Their first child, a daughter, Susan, was born in 1554, and when the Catholic Mary was crowned queen and began persecuting Protestant reformers, they fled into exile on the continent, living in near poverty until assisted by the King of Poland. Their son, Peregrine, was born in Cleves in 1555, which was the same year that Hugh Latimer was burned at the stake in Oxford. After Queen Mary's death in 1558, the family returned to England, and although Catherine didn't serve Queen Elizabeth, she used her position in Lincolnshire to promote religious reform. Catherine had been a strong supporter of the Protestant faith, and many books on reform carry her coat of arms and were dedicated to her, including works by Erasmus and William Tyndale. The family's adventures on the continent were even told in popular Elizabethan ballads. Catherine died after a long illness, aged 61, on the 19th of September 1580 at Grimsthorpe Castle. I recently visited her magnificent alabaster tomb at the Willoughby Chapel in St John's Church, Spilsby in Lincolnshire. Her husband, Richard Bertie, who died two years after Catherine, is buried beside her. I also visited Grimsthorpe Castle, which has been much changed over the years, but is still home to the 28th Baroness Willoughby de Eresby, and it's possible to visit Catherine's Tudor rooms and her chapel where Hugh Latimer preached reform. Catherine Willoughby was a woman far ahead of her time, prepared to stand up for her beliefs. The story of her life helps us see the complex world of the Tudors through a new perspective, and I believe she would have been pleased to know that is her legacy. And that concludes this episode of the Tudor's Dynasty podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. You can find my show notes from this episode and how to become a patron at tutorsdynastypodcast.com. Don't want to miss an episode? Be sure to subscribe at Apple Podcasts, Patreon, or Podbean. Intro and outro music called Folk Round by Kevin McLeod and Competech.com. Creative Commons license via filmmusic.io. Thanks for checking out the Tudor's Dynasty podcast. Read more. Read more on the blog at TudorsDynasty.com. Follow Tudor's Dynasty on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to Tudor's Dynasty on iTunes. Thanks for listening.